Okay, this is a conversation that I've been wanting to have for a long time. I call it the morality trap. Let's say you are a good person. You take care of your mother, you go to church, say you are married. You never hit your wife, you never cheated on your wife, you never done any of these things. Yet, for some reason, you are suffering. And this is something that I've kind of seen quite a bit over the internet. And this is something that I used to believe in myself, that if you are a good, moral, do right kind of person, you should have a good life. I'm here to tell you that I'm not saying you shouldn't be a good person. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is just being a good person is not enough. It is not even close to enough. And I consistently see on the internet with moral outrage where people are very upset, they're disgusted, and they're like, this person needs to be punished, this person Prime example, Cardi B. It came out that Cardi B, when she was doing her escorting services, used to drug and do things to men. And this did not hurt her popularity one bit. If anything, she made even more money after that. And yet, here you are, a good, honest, moral person, going to work every day, doing what you need to do, and you're literally catching hell. Once again, my intent with this video is to educate you, to make you aware that morality has nothing to do with financial or social status success. Has nothing to do with it. So if you are a good, moral person that you from a standpoint you're, you're just a good person and you're trying to understand why you as a good person are having such a hard life and I'm going to outline a few concepts to potentially help you understand what is going on Let's say you fall down on the, the concrete and you're having some kind of an attack. Maybe you're having a heart attack. Maybe you're having a panic attack. And there's a bunch of good people around you, right? Good people around you. They're checking on you. They're trying to make sure you're okay. But you need a doctor. That's the point that I want to make. When you're in a certain situation, you do not need a good moral person. You need a professional. I used to be in healthcare and I remember this guy, his name was Nathis. He was arrogant, egotistical. In many ways, he was an asshole, but he was a brilliant surgeon. If you needed someone to, uh, he was a, heart surgeon, and if you needed someone to work on you because his success rate was extremely high. I mean, there was cases where people said that the patient wasn't gonna make it. Nafis went in and put his magical hands in his chest and the dude pulled through. So I know that a lot of you are not going to agree with this. You're not going to lie, like this because you feel that we should all be treated equal. And I'm about to explain some stuff to you that I have come to understand. Cause like I used to be just like you, I'm a good moral person. I go to church, I get my hair cut. I do all this other stuff. I should have a good life. Um, it's way more to it than that. It's way more to it than that. The case of Nafis. Nafis, like I said, he was an egotistical, arrogant asshole. And he had the most amazing life. You don't want to know why? Nafis had 
highly desirable skill sets. Now, a lot of you are not going to agree with this. You're not going to hear this, but I'm going to say it anyway. When you can bring a unique set of skill sets to the table, you can get, you can literally get away with murder in our society. That's how it's set up. And this is why I call it the morality trap, because there are many people who are good people who, who don't commit crimes, who don't do anything against their neighbor, who are just good, solid people. And they're trying to understand why their lives are not good. This is a big, big issue. Because as we go into the global reset, as the stimulus economy deleverages and we start to move toward the real economy, we're going to have a lot of good people who are going to wondering, why is this happening to me? I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't commit any crimes. I didn't do it. And like I said, I, once again, just to be fundamentally 100% clear, I am not saying that you should become a bad or amoral person. That's not what I'm saying. Not saying that at all. Just, you know, I may have to say that a few more times just to get the gist of this across. What you should do is be a good, solid, moral person, have ethics, have character, and go out and get desirable skill sets. Because like I have seen this over and over and over again, because I remember we all used to talk about NAFIS. We all used to say these things about NAFIS. And when NAFIS would show up, people would shut up and do exactly what he told them to do. It, it was funny, like, yeah, NAFIS, he's an asshole. He's this, he's this, he's this. Oh, Dr. NAFIS. Oh, I'll go get the stat. I'll go get the labs for you. Right, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It, it, it was kind of funny because one of the things that I consistently see on the internet, I'll see something happen and then they will create a huge social outrage or a huge public outcry. And people are like, why is this happening? Why is this happening? Right. And they don't understand. Now there's times the internet does good. There's times when people see something, they know it's bad and they react and they go for it. That's actually good. But a lot of times, like years and years ago, there was this girl, she had multiple jobs. She had like, you know, she was working seven days and everyone's like, you know, this is a hardworking person. She should be compensated more. And I checked back a few years and she actually was doing not so good. Here, here, here's the thing. And once again, I'm not saying you should become a bad person. I'm not saying you should become an immoral person. I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying is you need to recognize the difference between being moral and being successful. Being moral is this own spear over here. It's his own spear. It's his own religion. It's this, and then being successful. I'm about to say something. You can be an evil person. Let's say you were an evil person. Let's say you were just crazy evil. Let's just say that you were a person that didn't like people. Let's say you were a person that when someone fell down and hurt themselves, you actually clapped because <clears throat> you're an evil person, right? So being an evil person makes you apart from most of society. Cause in my heart, I believe most people are good, but let's say you're an evil person, really evil, really nasty, right? But you are a computer programmer. You have high conscientious trait. Now what a conscientious trait is the ability to take care of your business. Like no one has to tell you what you do. If you're working on a project, you will start on the project. You will finish the project and you will work on the project till it's done. No one has to tell you this because you inherently have a high conscientious trait. You have good work habits and you're very clean and you're very meticulous. 
you can be evil as hell over here. But in this other part of your life, you can be extremely successful. Even though you're inherently evil, you're inherently a nasty person. And this is something that you will see with some rich people. There are some rich people who are extremely nasty. They're just not good people, right? And people are like, how did you get all that money being an asshole? Once again, let me say it again. There's being a good person and there's being successful. It's a different set of skills, skill sets. Like, once again, now, I don't want to be misconstrued in the comments on this, and I'm not saying become a criminal, but the best criminals are criminals that have good work ethics, high conscientious trait, the ability, a good work, work ethic, and the ability to be self-motivated. These are the same traits that make people who are non-criminal successful. So once again, it is not about your organic bearing of being a good moral person. It's not that about, it ain't about that at all. It's about having successful skill sets. So you can be a good person, which is a lot of people, and have no successful skill sets, which is why you could just suffer. You, you, you like I remember this um, a friend who had a daughter who was dating this guy. He was a very likable, very nice. You know, he's the type of guy. You know, he drives up, he sees you hauling groceries out the car, he'll just grab a bag and start moving car groceries in the house for you. And the parents like this guy, but they had some concerns. They had some concerns because he was a very nice, charismatic, high character young man, but he had no displayable signs of success. He drove an old car, he um, lived with his mother, and he had a really low wage job and they liked this guy but they were like they just knew that if their daughter ended up marrying this guy her life was going to be hell even though he was a very moral very nice very kind young man i met him a few times very nice guy but what they did they start pushing their daughter away from this moral stand up nice guy and start pushing their daughter toward these assholes who were financially successful. This is what they did. And once again, I don't want to be misconstrued. I'm not saying become a bad person. That's not what I'm saying at all. I am saying go out, be the good moral stand up person and go out and get better skill sets because that's what the issue is. This is why so many people suffer because they don't have desirable skill sets. They don't have um, the ability to create a, they don't have marketable skill sets. They're good people with no skill sets. And then they'll see someone who is unkind, nasty even, and this person is extremely successful. And then they're like, why is that person successful when I'm a good person and I do the right things and I look after people and I care about people and I take care of people, but my life is hell. And then some people will fall into a little trap where it's like, because they're a good person, a nice person, that's why they're not successful. That has nothing to do with it. Nothing. Well, it, it goes back to character. You can have really good character, and you can have really good morality, and you can be extremely poor. And you can have bad character, and you could be cutthroat and be extremely successful. It all caters about your skill sets, what you can bring to the table.
Once again, I will bring up Dr. Nafis. Brilliant surgeon. I mean, he would take on the hardest cases and he had an extremely high success rates where other doctors couldn't do what he could do. So I remember one day I was talking to him because I actually liked Nafis because he was funny. He was really funny and we were just sitting there talking and he told me something that I'll never forget. He said, when I was growing up and I was a young boy, I told my uh, father that I wanted to be rich. And my father said, no, you don't want to be rich. You want to be happy and successful and you want to be kind. And he said, no, no, dad, I want to be rich. And he was telling me that and he says, now I'm rich. I, I see I was right. <laughs> he started laughing, right? He was like, Nafis from early age had an internal bearing to take him where he wanted to go. And I'll never forget that because he was having this conversation with his father and his father was telling him to be a good moral person. And I remember one night Nafis was in and he was telling me, he's like, you know, when you become a really good surgeon, you pinch nurses on the ass and all they do is giggle. I was like, okay. Cause I didn't pinch any nurses on their asses, but he, he was, um, if you remember, if you remember the streets of San Francisco and Michael Douglas back then with the, the go fast hairdo, that's the kind of hairdo that Naf has had. And he, he was, he was a handsome man. So, you know, he pretty much sampled from the nursing table quite a bit. And like I said, I like Nafis because he was, Nafis was real. Nafis would like, I remember one night there was a family in there and uh, he actually told this woman to his face and he put his hands on their shoulders and he's like, look, ma'am, there's a very good chance that your husband's going to die. You know, he would not sugarcoat it. He was like, he says, I am going to do the best of my ability, but I want you to understand. I want you to be prepared that more than likely he will die. And this woman looked at him and she said, thank you for telling me the truth. And Nafis went in there. He did his magic. The guy made it. But he prepared her for the worst. Nafis never ever lied to the family or he, he never, he never did that. He never put a positive spin. He was like, this is what it is. This is what it's going to be. And like I said, I'm going to do my best, but I'm letting you know that this could happen. And that, that was one of the things I liked about Nafis because he, he didn't play with people's emotions or toys. He was a straight shooter. And one of the things that I learned from Nafis and I've kind of emulated some of these traits is when you become really good at something, you can get away with murder. And a lot of people don't like that. But here's the, here, here, here's the issue with that. What does it take to become really good at something? Time, effort, work ethic, consistency. And the time, effort, work habit, consistency, and the drive. These are five traits that the average person doesn't have. If you could develop those five traits and then take those traits and apply them in one good area of your life, you could become a millionaire. You could become fantastically rich. You can become financially successful. Notice I said financially successful because there are some people who are financially successful. Uh, Harvey Weinstein, he was financially successful but from a personal standpoint, he was an absolute failure. Um, so this is what I'm saying. You, you want to be that moral, upstanding, character-driven person. That's who you want to be. But you want to add to it because being moral ain't enough. It just, it ain't even close to enough. I've seen this with, you know, I remember, um, Years ago, I used to work in the lab and we used to have this um, co-worker who was lazy and I would be doing more work. I would do like literally three times as much work as Susan would do. 
and I get pissed off. I'm like, I'm over here working my butt off and Susan over there. And once again, Susan had understood and learned the system. She did just enough work to keep her job. That's all she did. And I was over there. I was indignant. I was like, man, I'm over here. You know, I'm doing this. I didn't understand that Susan had peeped out the game long before I even knew there was a game. Because see, I've gone through many transformations and stuff. I've learned a lot. And this is one of the things. Because when I was out in the storage auction trail, I was an asshole. And this is a lesson I learned from Aphis. I became really good at running people up. And what's running people up is making them pay more money for a unit than they want to pay because I would figure them out, I would fit, read their body language, and I knew when they were just getting ready to get off, then I would hop off before and then make them spend more money. And I got really, really good at it. Really, really good. It was a little dangerous game in the beginning because sometimes they would just stop and you'd be like, you get a unit you ain't want. But I worked on it and I worked on it and I worked on it and I became really good at internet sales and I became really good at systemizing the storage auction business. And I was, I was, I wasn't well liked. A lot of people didn't like me on the storage auction trail. I didn't care. I didn't care. Cause see in life, you're only going to have literally a handful of close friends. And if you can have, if you can like, if you've got yourself three really close friends, consider yourself lucky, consider yourself fortunate because right now, during this global reset, <clears throat> we got people out there who don't have no friends. They're just out here in this world suffering by themselves. They don't, they don't have no friends. There ain't nobody looking out for them. There's nobody uh, checking for them. They are alone. So if you got yourself three to five really good friends, consider yourself fortunate, consider yourself blessed. But I had the storage shock and I had a few friends. I had a few friends out in the storage auction game. But once again, once I learned the difference between morality and being successful, I became successful without, like I said, when I said I was an asshole, I wasn't like belligerent or nasty or nothing like that. It's just, if I knew someone wanted a unit, but I wanted it and I knew that I could make money off of it, I would take that unit. Because to see, one of the things is there are no prisoners in war. There are no prisoners in war. And, um, you know, with the morality crowd, with the character crowd, there's a fundamental lack of understanding. Once again, and I've said this many times, so I'm going to keep saying it. You don't have to become an asshole. You don't have to become a bad person. You don't have to become a person with no character. That's not what I am saying. What I'm saying is you need to recognize and learn that being a moral person is not enough. That's the trick because uh, during this global reset, we're going to see a lot of people go through a lot of economic pain and we're going to see a lot of good people who are going to um, be wondering why is this happening to me? And I'm, I'm getting ready to tell you you don't have desirable, highly markable skill sets. That's why this is happening to you. This is why you're getting what you're, what's going on. This, this, this is why you're getting the results that you're getting, because I can tell you from personal experience that when you have a unique or des highly desirable skill set, and then you have these five attributes, hard work, a good work ethic, time, consistency, and, um, conscientiousness trait and you will pull those four those attributes in the right area you can be extremely successful regardless of your moral compass regardless of your moral compass and a lot of people don't want to hear that because what they want to do is put morality and success like that like that and that's one of the reasons that when I did hustlers kung fu and I built my brand I made myself, I didn't make myself to be a saint. I never presented myself to be some choir boy. There was a, there was a reason for that because with my brand, 
if I presented myself to be a choir board or something and then something came out, my business would have been tanked. It would have been over. And because I've never presented myself to be a choir boy or a church boy or a super, um, I've never really suffered when I've made, when I've done things. I've never really suffered because that's like, oh, that's just how Glendon is. That was a calculated move on my part because I have seen people who have presented themselves to be like Chris Hogan on the Dave Ramsey show. Um, I believe he had an affair. He, he lost his job. So, you know, you got to be careful with that stuff. You got to be really, really careful with that stuff. Because when you present yourself to be a choir boy or such, a, such as, and you do something that goes against your image, you could literally be out of business. You could literally have to be a business because America is a strange place. We have not had a president who's been a single man, I think, since the 20s. I don't think a single man could become the president because America's like, I want my president to be committed. And once again, the morality trap is deep because what's going to happen during the global pandemic, the global reset is a lot of people who are good, honest, morality driven people are going to get depressed because it's like, I'm a good person. Why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? Kind of like when I was homeless, I didn't understand that me being a hardworking, me being a good guy had nothing to do with me being homeless. Had nothing to do with it. I had no clue because I was stuck. I used to be caught in the morality trap. I'm a good man. I'm married. I don't cheat on my wife. I don't beat my wife. I'm a good guy. Why is all this? See, when you propagate your life on, you don't do these bad things. And then there's this expectation that you're going to get all these wonderful things you're barking up the wrong tree. You're barking up the wrong tree. It's just like I'm doing this video because I see what's coming. 22 is 2022. We're going to have a very rough year. Real estate isn't going to crash. I just throw that in there. It's not going to crash. But from a moralistic standpoint, you can have your morals. You can be a good person. I'm not saying don't do that. And I don't know if this is the fifth or sixth time that I said that. What I'm saying is you need to add more to the recipe. I have a friend who is his father was a preacher. This guy is he's a Boy Scout. He's a Boy Scout. He does nothing wrong. This dude doesn't even speed. He's very much by the books, do the right things. But guess what? He's also an extremely smart guy, hard worker, very conscientious, trait driven. And he owns a small business that is very successful. And we've had conversations. He feels that his business is successful because he's very moralistic. And I'm like, I had nothing to do with it because we've had this conversation several times. It's like, you're hardworking. You, you, he runs a marketing company, very indesirable business. He's really good at it. And I was like, you are successful because you're good at what you do. Your morals have nothing to do with it, but he feels because he's moralistic, he's married, three children. He's a good father. He feels that that's the reason he is successful. And then there's another person I know we're not friends. This guy, he, he, he loves to play the game really hard. He, 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 he we're not friends. I, I don't like him. His name is Martin. I know of him because I've done business with him. Martin will play the game so tight. I actually did a business deal with him where I lost money. 
and then that was the first and last deal I did with Martin because Martin will Martin Martin he will he will mess with you he will he will take all the profit out the deal he and that's just how he plays the game and he does everything he had a, another friend of mine he and Martin were business partners and Martin is diabolical Martin I met Martin when he had another business partner at this point Martin has gotten rid of all of his business partners. He's bought every, he, like he's pushed them all out. He's pushed them all out. He owns all the companies by himself. He is extremely rich. He's extremely successful. His wife is an interior designer, beautiful chick, and they have beautiful children. So he is a complete diabolical asshole. And he has a beautiful wife, a beautiful family, and he's rich. And he's richer than Mother Friend because Mother Friend knows Martin and he 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 doesn't like Martin either. Because we we are, everyone who knows Martin, if you know how Martin is, you just like ah, eh, I don't want to mess with Martin. And you know we were having a conversation. And I was like, you know Martin, you would you agree he's moralist? He says Martin. He says Martin is beyond nasty. Is Martin successful? He's like yeah, he's like way more successful than I am. And I was like, there you go. There you, that's the point I've been trying to make. Because when I bring up Martin, you know, the conversation changes a little bit. But once again, guys, being more, don't fall into the morality trap. And once again, you don't have to be a bad person. I keep saying that because I know that, you know, the internet, that people catch a snapshot and then they run with it and they, they like go to town with it. You don't have to become a bad person, but you do have to add more to your repertoire than just being a good person. Like there are a lot of single men. There are a lot of single women. I have a friend. She's a lovely, lovely person, super nice. And she is 50, never been married, no children. And she's a really good person and one night we were just drinking at my place and you know she had she had a moment and she's like i will be 50 years old and i've never been married and i have no children but i'm a good person what the fuck is going on i mean she 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 had a moment she had a she had a meltdown um because you know she had been drinking i didn't let her leave and um i didn't really have no well i knew what the issue was but because this is my friend I did not brutally tell her the truth because where she was from a mental standpoint she wasn't ready for it and the reason that you know she's almost 50 years old she's 5'2 and she's about 270 and she's been that size since I've known her that's the reason that's the reason and you know it's gonna be hard for a lot of guys to look past that 270 and see her good beautiful and perfect character it's, it ain't happening it just ain't happening and um i did not tell her that because you know when you know someone for a long time you kind of know where they are and I, she wasn't and you know and on one level she knows she knows but Knowing and being delivered the truth is two different things. And accepting the truth and facilitating change is two different things. So I did not. I didn't bring it up. I didn't bring it up. I didn't. Nope, 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 nope. Because uh, where she was, that may have pushed her over the edge. Just, I didn't see the point in even bringing that up. Because, you know, we're at a certain point in life. But guys, do not fall into the morality trap. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Because it can, it can literally destroy your life. It can literally have you chasing after something that isn't going to work for you. Because um, you haven't accepted the consequences of life. So... Go, go ahead, watch this video a few times. Think of Nafis, 
think of my my friends think of martin because the reality is success doesn't care if you're kind or not it doesn't care if you can bring the marketplace what it wants what it needs you can be successful even if you're not a good person all right so this is some of the stuff that i'm trying this year a lot of people have reached out and they want to have discussions uh, i have multiple companies i don't really have the time to chop it up with people on the phone for free i just don't so what i'm doing is group coaching and the link's going to be below what you can do is go buy a spot and once i get 10 people i will have a group zoom call where you can ask your questions and we can have you know corporate conversations also something else i'm getting ready to do um i don't know if the link will be below i gotta work on that but i'm getting ready to do i'm starting a credit repair company tied together with a financial company now what is this so you sign up first thing we're going to do is get your credit reports and then we're going to look at, do we're, we're not just going to we're, we're, part of the service will be to fix your credit but we're going to put you on a budget and then we're going to teach you how to make more money so we're going to fix your credit we're going to do a financial review and then we're going to teach you how to make more money so that's something else that may not be ready at this point but if it is they'll, it'll be below in one of the comments because when I read that 100 million people have a credit score of 620, 620 or less, that shocked me. And that explained why all of the how to fix your credit videos on YouTube do so well, because there's a huge demographic. So all that stuff would be below. So just letting you guys know what's going on. And there will be more stuff that's coming. Much, much more.